Hey fans and subscribers, this is your host Joe on the Gaming for Insight channel, and I am creating a video in an effort to confirm the BIOS version on my machine, specifically looking to confirm if I have the most recent version of the BIOS installed on my One X Player X1 Intel Core Ultra 7 155H, and it is March 29th, 2024, upon making this video. So I wasn't sure if my X1 did have the most up-to-date BIOS. So in this video, I am going to be looking to confirm that and then looking to also flash the BIOS with what I have as a confirmation from One X Player as to the most recent version of the BIOS as of March 29th here, specifically this 0.3.7 that this YouTube video that I have up on my screen right now talks about in working for resolving stability issues with the eGPU. So I was looking at this video and it looked in the video that the SM BIOS version is 3.6. And so I see that I have that on my machine. And so that prompted me to investigate and look more. So if I go into HW Info here, I can actually pull up the SM BIOS here. And I see that I'm working with 3.6 as of right now. And if I go to the motherboard information generally here in HW Info, I can see that the BIOS version is 2.37 and the BIOS date is March 1st, 2024. So this is the information I have going into this. Now, one X player I mentioned reached out to me and they provided me a link with this GM15-BIOS-DTT-V41. And I have downloaded this onto my machine. I will put this link in the description if anyone else is curious to confirm whether they are working with the most recent BIOS as of March 29th, 2024, in looking at this video. So what I am going to do is I am going to extract the files to my desktop per the instructions that I've read in the email. So we're going to extract all and we're just going to do a browse here and we're going to go to desktop and select folder and then select extract and those are extracted and I can open that up and I do see that this FBIOS here, this is a Windows command script file and this is the one that I am going to need to access here within this GM15-BIOS-DTT-V41. So let me put that aside, but before doing that, I do want to close out my tabs here and want to make sure I don't have anything running in the background that would interfere. But what is important that the instructions did list to do is to go into the security settings and disable the host-based security controls. Well, specifically the host-based security controls were not what was detailed, but it was a general statement about the security on the machine. So I'm just going, what I did here was I went, I just typed in Windows Security and Start Menu and I'm going to go, I went to virus and threat protection and scrolling down here, I went to manage settings under virus and threat protection settings. <clears throat> and I'm going to disable real time protection and that disables dev drive protection. I'm going to disable cloud delivered protection, automatic sample submission, and even though the instructions did not specifically state to disable all of these, I am just doing that as a precautionary measure because I'm going to go back in and enable these. So I have those disabled. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to go back to my folder here. And I am going to right click on the F BIOS, the F BIOS file 
and I am going to run this as administrator. But before I do that, I am going to plug in my machine that is very important to do. So I have that plugged in, even though I do have a full battery, I'm just doing that or almost a full battery doing that out of precaution precaution. So I want to run as administrator and I'm prompted if I want to run this file, I'm going to select more info. I'm going to select run anyway. And the flashing is going to begin the steps for flashing is going to begin all right and we have the detail here that the FPT operation is successful press any key to continue so I'll, I'll just press the the D key on the keyboard now what the instructions have stated is for the machine to be restarted and it's going to take a longer time than usual two to three minutes is what is specified so I'm going to keep my device plugged in and I'm just going to right click or double tap here on the start menu and then do a restart all right and it looks like we have a startup here and that was about two to three minutes, I will say, based on the instruction. And just left the device alone at that time. All right, so we have a successful bootstrap. Going to go ahead and Authenticate, log into the machine. Okay, so we are prompted to do a pin setup and this may be due to having disabled the security controls on the host that we did. So let me go through the prompts to set up a pin. All right, I'm going to enter my password here. All right, and I will go through my 2FA, two-factor authentication. All right, and I'm going to continue with the pin setup. All right. All right, now I just went through the steps to set up a new pin and I am on my desktop right now. So let's take a look at our information within HW Info. So we will pull this up. All right. Minimize that and we will go into our motherboard here. And as you can see, the BIOS information has indeed been updated. Just looking at motherboard, we're working with BIOS version 2.41 instead. And the BIOS date is March 20th, 2024. So this has changed based on what we did before our setup. And if we go and look at the SM BIOS version, we're still looking at it as 3.6. So just to confirm with the more recent BIOS, the way not to check is looking at the system management BIOS version or SM BIOS, which will show 3.6 for both the one that came on my machine that was older and the new one. The way to check is to look at the HW Info motherboard information 
and to look to see that you are using BIOS version 2.41 with the BIOS day 3, 2024, March 20th, 2024. Another way to check also if you are interested in this is to look at the changes for the 1X console update that came March 25th, I believe, based on Discord. So let me pull that page up and I will share this page in the link, but these are the details for the 1X console update log specific to 0.7.5. And the feature that's mentioned that at least had my interest is added X1 Intel super performance mode requires updating to the latest BIOS after activation. Power consumption will be managed by the underlying system providing three performance options. I did not have, or I was not able to locate this new feature on the BIOS that I had that you saw I shared details on at the beginning of the video. So what does this look like? Well, we can open our 1x console side menu here and i just hit the turbo button up top on the right hand side and we can look at the additional options down here this setting and you are going to see if you're working with the the recent bios and you're you are working with the 1x console version that i've mentioned here this recent one 0.7.5 then you're going to see this Intel Ultra Perform mode and you can enable this. So what I want you to do is I want you to watch what happens up here specific with the performance. Now, mine right now is set at 28 watt, but this is going to change. This menu right here is going to change. So let me, I show, I'm showing the radio button here for the Intel Ultra Performance Mode. So when I enable that, as you can see, the Intel Ultra Performance Mode, that is what is showing up here. It changed, this menu changed. So now we have three options. We have 28 Watt Ultra, 32 Watt Ultra, and 35 Watt Ultra. Now I'm not going to sit here and pretend to fully understand if each of these can make a significant performance across games. I'm going to have to try these settings myself, but what I am noticing right now is that there is an update with a ultra perform mode. And even though the 35 watt was available, as you can see, this is what it would look like originally before the update. And with Intel Ultra Perform mode disabled, 35 watt is available. But there is the option now to have this Ultra Perform mode enabled and then select the 35 watt Ultra. So I'm interested to see what this will make as far as a potential difference across games like Cyberpunk 2077. Now that we have reached the conclusion of this video, let me share with you some important channel content you don't want to miss. Gaming for Insight is a member and one of the founders of the Handheld United Discord server and YouTube channel. You can find me and other channels you want to know about on this server. So join us on Discord, see the invite to the server in the video description. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to these other channels for additional content on gaming handheld devices and more. Those are Gamers Generation, your friendly AI with a sense of witty humor that uploads informative reviews, tutorials, and more. OKS Gamer, you can find the latest and more than OKS reviews on gaming handhelds and benchmarks, as well as videos on performance with certain drivers. CPPC Tech, known for his awesome mod on the ROG Ally, this channel has reviews and more on gaming handhelds and accessories. Windeck Tech, Find candid and informative videos on gaming and the tech space with gaming handhelds and more. Handheld Hardware, formerly known as Project SBC, get the latest perspective from an astute programmer, designer, and reviewer on gaming devices. Now, wouldn't it be neat if all of these channels, including mine, all got together in one place for, say, a podcast to share our knowledge on everything handheld gaming? Well, as a matter of fact, we do. Subscribe to the Handheld United YouTube channel and don't miss our live weekly podcast 
that I host on Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join in the live chat where you can comment on what we discuss and partake in our trivia nights. Links to the YouTube channels mentioned are in the description of this video. So with that, in the words of Commander Shepard from Mass Effect, I should go.